more and more people are developing type 2 diabetes. In 2014, there were worldwide around 420 million people with type 2 diabetes. This year, there are almost 800 million people with type 2 diabetes. And by the year 2050, around 1.3 billion people will have type 2 diabetes. This tells us that type 2 diabetes is on the rise and there is nothing that is stopping it. And it's hard to prevent or improve or reverse a disease if you don't know what it really is. That's why it's important to watch this video because I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about type 2 diabetes. If you're watching this video, this means that you either have type 2 diabetes or want to prevent type 2 diabetes or maybe you know somebody who has it and you want to just get informed on this disease. I'm Ali from Illness Free Life and in this video you'll learn everything you need to know about type 2 diabetes and you'll learn one of the biggest myths about blood sugar problems and type 2 diabetes. It's important to know that there are several types of diabetes. You can clump them all together and you'll get around 10 types of diabetes. But around 99% of all diabetes cases are either type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. And that's what we're gonna focus on in this video. And if you clump the type 1 and type 2 diabetes patients together, then you'll see that around 95% of all diabetics in this group are type 2 diabetics and around 5% are type 1 diabetics. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. This is a disease where the immune system of your own body attacks both the insulin producing cells in the pancreas, called the beta cells, and the insulin that's actually being produced by these cells. This disease usually presents itself before puberty and often during the early years of a child. The reason is pretty simple. The immune system of the body has been attacking the pancreas and the insulin in the early years and there comes a point where it all becomes too much. There's too much damage to the pancreas. There isn't enough insulin to absorb all the sugars in the blood sugar and you'll start developing type 2 diabetes as a child. Type 1 diabetes is thus a disease where two things happen simultaneously. One, the production of insulin is being destroyed and the insulin that is being produced is being neutralized by antibodies against that insulin, which causes these people to live pretty much insulin less. And thus they don't have any capabilities to lower their blood sugar with the usage of insulin. The only way to lower their blood sugar is by injecting insulin because their own production has been destroyed or at least severely minimalized. Type 2 diabetes is totally different. Type 2 diabetes is also called adult onset diabetes. And contrary to type 1 diabetes, it usually or almost always presents itself later on in life. Usually it's a disease which is associated with being a senior, but more and more younger people, as in 30 year olds or 40 year olds are getting the disease. And type 2 diabetes is totally different from type 1 diabetes because your immune system has nothing to do with developing this disease. With type 2 diabetics, there is another problem and that is that their insulin isn't as effective anymore in lowering the blood sugar as it used to be. And to understand this better, we need to talk about the hormone insulin. Insulin is a very important hormone in regulating your blood sugar. Although your body is able to absorb sugars and carbohydrates from your bloodstream into the cells without insulin, insulin will make the task of absorbing sugars way easier. Insulin increases the uptake of sugars from your bloodstream 10 to 20 fold by stimulating the GLUT4 receptor. This of course means that your body can absorb a lot of sugars from your bloodstream and thus lowers your blood sugar after eating a meal that contains carbohydrates or sugars. However, type 2 diabetics have a problem with this mechanism. They tend to develop something called insulin resistance over time and with the years. And this insulin resistance is a situation where your body becomes unable to absorb sugars from the bloodstream like it used to. Thus keeping a lot of sugars in your bloodstream 
and when you measure your blood, you'll measure high blood sugar levels. So it's also important to discuss how insulin resistance actually happens and what you can do to prevent this or even reverse this. But before we do this, if you like this video and want to receive more of these videos, please give us a like and subscribe for free to this YouTube channel. That way you'll never miss a video and you'll help us reach more people to improve their blood sugar and to reverse their type 2 diabetes. And now back to the video. Contrary to popular belief and even what your doctors might tell you, type 2 diabetics don't produce less insulin than non-diabetics. Because usually when you get the diagnosis high blood sugar or type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance, they often tell you that you produce too little insulin to regulate your blood sugar. But this is nonsense. Insulin production can actually be measured. And one of the ways to do this is by performing a so-called C-peptide test. This is a test that can show how well or how much insulin you produce. And when you do this test in type 2 diabetics, you often see that they produce more insulin than the average person, not less. Again, the problem in type 2 diabetics is not the amount of insulin that they produce, or the lack thereof, but the sensitivity of this insulin in the body. And to understand this, we need to understand what the difference is in the body when you eat fast sugars and carbohydrates and slow complex sugars and carbohydrates. The body gets resistant to insulin only when you eat fast sugars and carbohydrates. And the mechanism is as follow. When you eat large amount of fast sugars and carbohydrates, you will get a huge blood sugar spike. To combat this, your pancreas will produce huge amounts of insulin to lower the blood sugar. Now, this isn't a problem if it happens from time to time, but if you regularly eat or drink products with high amounts of sugars and carbohydrates and low amount of dietary fibers, then this means these sugars and carbohydrates will enter your bloodstream very, very fast. Do this daily, over several years, and this will mean that you will develop insulin resistance. How, you might ask? Because your body or your cells, to be more specific, will get used to these high level of insulin that your pancreas is producing to combat the high blood sugar spikes that you are producing when eating the unhealthy carbohydrates and sugars. With time, your cells will become lazy and only perform if insulin levels are high. The problem with this is that they will get lazy over time and demand more and more insulin to perform the same task or to have the same effect. It's almost the same as with drug addicts. They need, over time, more and more of the drug they use to get the same high. This is also because of resistance to that drug. And in your body, to insulin, it's pretty much the same. Your body will get lazy, your cells will become insensitive to insulin and will only perform the same task if insulin levels are high and if they can get higher with time. Now, your pancreas is able to keep up with this increasing demand, but there comes a point that it all becomes too much for your pancreas and it cannot increase its production anymore. And that's the state we call insulin resistance. So the most important thing to understand about developing insulin resistance is not that it develops because you eat high amounts of sugars and carbohydrates. Sure, that doesn't help, but the main reason is the speed with which these carbohydrates and sugars enter your bloodstream. If they enter quickly, the blood sugar spikes will be high and thus your pancreas will need to produce a lot of insulin to combat the high blood sugar, which means that insulin levels will also be high in a very short amount of time and your cells will get used to that high amount of insulin in a short amount of time. It's different when you eat carbohydrates from a complex or slow source. Even though they might contain the same amount of sugars and carbohydrates per unit of weight as the bad variation, the carbohydrates and sugars will enter your bloodstream way slower and thus meaning that your pancreas has to produce insulin at a way slower rate than when you eat bad stuff. And thus, your bodily cells will only get used to that small amount of insulin 
in your bloodstream and never get resistant to insulin because you never reach high amounts of insulin anyway. To visualize this, see this picture. This is the difference between eating a high glycemic index product and a low glycemic index product. Although both products contain the same amount of carbohydrates and sugars per unit of weight, you see a difference in blood sugar level spikes. The high glycemic index product will cause your body to produce way more insulin than the low glycemic index product. Although in both cases, the area under the curve and the amount of carbohydrates and sugars per unit of weight are the same. The key to combating type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance is not per se to lower the amount of sugars and carbohydrates you're eating, which definitely helps because it impacts your pancreas less, but it's way more important to improve the quality of sugars and carbohydrates you're eating. Because what you want to prevent is these high blood sugar spikes that also cause high insulin spikes and thus insulin resistance. The lower you can keep these spikes after a meal or drink, the better it is for your insulin resistance. To understand this even better, it's good to use the metaphor of a mile in distance. What do you think is easier or less impactful on your body? Walking a mile or running a mile? The distance in both cases is the same, but the intensity and effort for your body is definitely not the same. Walking a mile, you can even do that without breaking a sweat if it's not too hot outside. But running a mile is way more difficult and most people will be huffing and puffing and sweating once they reach that one mile mark. Again, just like with the carbohydrates and sugars, although the amount or distance is the same, the intensity on your body is not the same. And if you have to walk a mile every hour or run a mile every hour, then you can imagine that the wear and tear on your body is also not the same. Again, even though the distance is the same. And this also goes for insulin resistance. To prevent it or improve it or reverse it, you need to improve the quality of the products you're eating to lower the impact it has on your pancreas. Which brings me to the most important thing to know about type 2 diabetes and time to debunk the biggest myth about type 2 diabetes. Diabetics have been told that once you get type 2 diabetes, you'll always have type 2 diabetes. But this is, of course, nonsense. You'll only have type 2 diabetes if you continue to eat and drink like you used to. Because if you do what you have been doing, you'll get what you have been getting. But fortunately, this also means that if you improve your lifestyle, your diet, that you are able to improve your blood sugar and reverse your type 2 diabetes. We've helped thousands of people with this personally and I can guarantee you that you are able to improve your blood sugar and reverse your type 2 diabetes if you improve your diet and lifestyle. Now to tell you all the things you need to do to reverse your type 2 diabetes in this video will make this video a bit longer than it needs to be. That's why I suggest you follow the link in the description of this video and download our diabetes free secret. This is a free giveaway we have where we teach you the most important causes of type 2 diabetes and what you can do to prevent, improve and reverse type 2 diabetes with a healthy lifestyle. If you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.